Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, it's a joy to be able to bring the good news of Jesus to you. The text that we're going to consider today comes to us from Paul's letter to the church in Philippi, second chapter, verses 1 through 13. It reads, If there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interests of others. Have this in mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Have you ever been asked, what is your favorite Bible verse? I have, and believe it or not, it took me by surprise. It was when I was considering a call before I came here 13 years ago. It was asked to me by someone from another church that was considering me. I had never been asked that question before. And to tell you the truth, I panicked a bit. Eventually, I fell on the old standby. John 3.16, for God so loved the world. And I spoke about it with conviction. But to tell you the truth, I didn't know if it was really my favorite or not. I had never really thought about it. But I can tell you now, my favorite portion of Scripture is Philippians 2, 6 through 11. We find it placed right in the middle of our reading today. It's a poem, and it's often referred to as the Christ hymn. Many commentators believe it to predate Paul's letter and suggest that it appears to have already been in circulation in the early church. They recognize the obvious poetry in it and the deep theology concerning the dual identity of Christ as both God and the new Adam. The new Adam, who, unlike the old Adam, did not try to grasp equality with God. Instead, as the new Adam, Jesus made himself a slave obedient unto death, even death on a cross. And he did it for our sakes, not just ours, but for the whole world. Now Paul is writing here to the church of Philippi, urging them to love one another, something that he urges all of the churches to do. And he uses this poem as the power source behind their ability to carry it out. Have this same mind in you that is yours in Christ Jesus. Then he inserts the poem, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking on the form of a slave, being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Paul is saying, be like Jesus And you can be like him because he is in you and because he is faithful to lay himself down for others 
and to love others and to serve others. And because he is in you and your mind and you have the same mind as him as you abide in him, you can be faithful to obey. Not because you have the personal willpower or the good character or the personal integrity to obey God, but because with Christ in you, He wills and empowers you to be faithful in obedience as He was faithful in obedience, even to death on a cross. Paul is using Christ as an example here, but not setting him up as the perfect example of love and servanthood and then calling us to imitate him in our human nature, in our human will. If that were the case, we would surely fail. No, Paul is setting Jesus up as our perfect and faithful example and saying because he is in you, because we have access to his mind, for it is yours as you abide in him, you too will be faithful as he is faithful. Now go, Paul says, love others, esteem others as greater than yourselves, serve others, because that's exactly what Jesus did for you on the cross. And now as we abide in him, we are empowered to do the same. For if we are truly his disciples, he says we will take up our crosses and follow him. And as we abide in him, that's exactly what we will do. Amen.